Teaching tip 79 to 101, classroom management. 79, order. Focus on having an orderly classroom. Put everything in its place. 80, create procedures. For example, the best way to get a large, loud class to quiet down is to create a procedure so that when you raise your hand they know what they must do. In order for them to recognize it you must 81. Rehearse. Whether you're creating a chant or some other procedure you'll have to rehearse it in you'll have to rehearse it for it to work effectively. 82. Respect not like. Focus on getting your students to respect you rather than like you. If you focus purely on getting them to like you, it will probably have the opposite effect. It's possible that some of your students will not like you, and it's possible that you might not particularly care for a student as well. But it's important that you treat them with respect. 83. Disruptive students. If you have a student who is being disruptive, Talk to the student outside of the class and or consider writing them a letter. This will save them any embarrassment and again, this is the respectful way of doing it. 84. Rearrange their seating. Change the student's seating if you have students who talk too much or interrupt the class so that they are no longer sitting with their friends. When they earn the right back, let them sit with their friends. 85. Contracts. Consider making a student contract and giving it to them at the beginning of the year. Outline your expectations of them and of yourself. 86. Calm. Remain calm at all times. If you get irate, then they win and the situation rarely improves. 87. Silent students. Try using pair work for students who don't talk. This gives them less pressure. Or start sentences and have them finish it. Or use role play as this gives them a new identity. 88. Avoid labels. Avoid language like you're such a good student or you're so smart. If that student is so smart, how will the other students feel? 89. Give them a choice. When you're dealing with a disobedient child, give them a choice. For example, would you like to sit with your friends or over there with the girls? Would you like to do that work standing up or sitting down? Would you like to join us in the game or take a test instead? 90. Seating. Experiment with different seating arrangements. Use rows, U-shapes, circles, and or group work. Or even try back-to-back -back seating for certain activities. Different seating arrangements will be appropriate for different tasks. For example, if you want to foster more intimacy in your class, try a U-shape. 91. Be fair. Kids have an innate sense of what is fair. They can help keep you in check. This will increase their respect for you. 92. Focus on the majority. Acknowledge the good students and don't let a few so-called difficult students spoil your class or become the focal point. This is a challenge. This is like trying to get control of a race car when it's out of control spinning towards a wall. You can't help but look at the wall. But the thing is, if you continue to look at the wall, you will hit it. Whereas if you focus on the direction you want to go, you will get there. Ninety-three. Be consistent. Especially in regards to your rules. There may be times when you might be feeling good and hear or see something that you'd rather ignore, but the thing is, the kids won't ignore it. If you're being inconsistent with your rules, it will undermine them. The kids will see that and act accordingly. 
94, crying. In the kindergarten setting, you may encounter an occasional crying kid. A crying kid can be a big downer. However, you don't want to give this kid attention. Usually the crying kid just wants attention. Acknowledge the child, and you could ask them if there's anything you can do, but quickly redirect the kid's attention to something else. It could be a time to introduce a game, and of course, use your body and attitude to get the other kid's attention. 95. Rewards. If you use rewards, make sure that they are given sporadically and that they are not expected. Aside from learning, the best reward is often just a smile, a high five, or a compliment. 96. Progress is the best reward. Let the students know when they make progress. This is really what it's all about. Sometimes they are not aware of it themselves. So letting them know will surely encourage more. 97. Create routines. For example, every day that you have this class at 1.15, you have everyone sitting at their desk. And at 1.55, you have the students line up at the door. 98. Stop. When you have a problem in the classroom, stop what you are doing. If you have a child who is talking when they shouldn't be, or doing something that you don't want them to, stop teaching. Stop talking and focus on that student. Often just the silence will get their attention. The class will stop too and look at that student. The more common approach to these kinds of interruption, interruptions is to say, Maggie, stop talking, or Max, pay attention. That just causes more stress and work for you. It also is not very effective. You'll likely get their attention for just a second. When you have an interruption, stop teaching and look at the student. That student will then realize that they are doing something they shouldn't be. 99. Clapping. Use a rhythm of clapping to get large classes under control. Use a set of three to seven claps in a quick rhythmic order, kind of like a drum beat. The students will then have to repeat the order back to you. You will have to teach them ahead of time so that they know that they should repeat it back to you. This will be especially effective for when you need to get the attention of a large class. 100. Treat your students how you would like to be treated. If you don't want them to say what's up to you, then don't say it to them. 101. One at a time. Allow only one student to leave the room at a time during class.